Are you getting what I'm saying? So every time we walk in sin and iniquity, what we are doing is that we are giving Satan license. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's an authorization. We are giving him authority. And so he can stand and say on legal basis. Bless you. Thank you. For instance, let me use one example. Something that concerns all of us. The issues of finance. Forget about kingdom prosperity when you are not faithful in tithing. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Are you seeing that some of us are where we are financially? Not because the government hates us. Not because we were born from poor families necessarily. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Some of us have consistently violated the set principles. You see, the principles of the kingdom are not invented. You just discover them and walk in it. You don't invent a new kingdom principle. No. It's been there. The Bible says, ask for the ancient part. It didn't say create one. Ask for it. It's already there. Ask for it. Walk therein and you will find rest for your soul. Hallelujah. Again and again, we find ourselves violating the principles of the kingdom. But I want you to know that whether the predicament is caused by your personal violation of the kingdom, there is still a technology in the spirit that can take you out in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then the issue of the effects of what parents and ancestry and so on and so forth has done. Oh, it's so important you must understand that these things work our fathers covenanted africa to satan our geographical regions came into fraternity with the kingdom of darkness hallelujah i've had the opportunity to travel around many places and when i enter a city for a meeting if i'm staying there a few days one of the things i want to learn is the culture of the people hallelujah and in a few places that we've had opportunity to i have seen the reason why certain geographical regions are held back that's why you see certain traits come on to certain things and people keep saying it doesn't work just believe there is nothing you are seeing that people are not getting married it's obvious they say don't worry just claim it that nothing is happening faith is not foolishness faith works on proper kingdom understanding not just some shadow guesswork no are you getting what i'm saying now a lot of preachers have said anything you don't understand just take it by faith no faith does not mean haphazard you can know the build up of the factors that are put together that makes you believe that that thing will work that's why the bible says in all you're getting get understanding hallelujah so many of us today are victims you found out that your mother used to be epileptic you were now born love god all your life you were born again maybe from a young age and preachers told you everything is all right but you are seeing the same traits in your parents happening in your life hallelujah everyone that got married in your family the man or the woman died you are seeing the traces and people just tell you don't worry everything is okay just jump and shout around and say it's fine see there are a lot of people carrying lots of disappointment and pain in church from the result of wrong teachings that women of god have given people it's just that they don't have the courage to confront us and call us wicked people but there are many misguided teachings that we have brought the body of christ into that is causing them to die and you see because of the man of god is always the one receiving the honorarium is that true he's always the one receiving the blessings he's always the one he's shielded somewhat from the effect of all of these things even if he falls sick as a result of his own ignorance he has money to remedy his predicament fast so nobody will know who is deceiving who are you following me tonight the bible shows us clearly that a possibility exists for people 
to be benefactors of either the right doing or the wrong doings of those who have gone ahead of them hallelujah number three which may be the situation of some of us here jesus introduced something new to them hmm. verse three jesus answered neither that means there is still a possibility that you may have remedied the issue of all kinds of evil that comes through family lineage it's possible that you may have come into a point where you are born again and genuinely walking in the way of the lord but then you will notice that certain evils may seem to happen unrestrained and you may be tempted to ask the question lord what did i do wrong are you getting the point now because as far as i'm concerned any cause and any yoke over my life has been broken i know i'm free based on the truth of god's word i now have the revelation of the blood i'm born again i know what christ has done and i have applied it in my life so i don't expect that there will be any family curse walking in my life again and i know that i'm walking by the principles of god and where i fall short of his standard i understand the principles of repentance and i know how to approach the throne of mercy but jesus said there are certain things that can happen in your life and this is not for everybody are you getting my point he said there are certain things that are orchestrations and the bible says so that at a certain time the glory of god may be revealed in your life i know that this contradicts many messages that many of us have had but this is the bible are you getting my point a man called job for instance the bible tells us that this was a man who feared god and eschewed evil it was god's own testimony not a man god who dwells in light where there is no shadow of darkness gave a testimony about a man satan himself came and said as a result of this man's faithfulness there was a hedge belt around him and i satan could not even penetrate him and he said lord does job serve you for nothing he said take away what he has and watch the way he will cause you to your face i hope you know that those in the earth realm did not know there was a drama happening in the heavenlies are you getting my point that was why when job's predicament came three men came together with elihu and from their human logical point what did they say they kept quiet for seven days seven days they could not talk to job later they opened their mouth and said job what sin did you do that bring this kind of catastrophe and job said be careful lest you bring a curse upon yourself he said though he slay me yet will i praise him i know my heart is clean i know my slate is clean oh lord i served you but i saw my father die i prayed and prayed and prayed we fasted we even had revelations that he was going to leave but he died are you seeing that now and he was a man who feared god oh my mother oh my brother oh lord i wrote jam in integrity and i read i did everything but the result came out and i may have to repeat one whole year again oh god i would have cheated in that exam hall but i stayed and because of it now i have an extra year he said for such kind of people there is a technology in the spirit that is able to walk these things out and build a dimension of glory i'm preaching to someone tonight hallelujah we are very quick to be judgmental over people you suddenly see sickness ravaging a family and you're seeing that they love god the woman is the sanctuary keeper cleaning everywhere yet her children are dying and people just look and say oh god oh dear that means that there is a hidden sin in this woman's life but the bible says at the end of job's life when god made a post with him god gave him twice everything his daughters were the fairest in the city 
the wife of job looked at him and said do you still hold your integrity in other words whether you hold your integrity or not as far as we are concerned the situation so just cause god justify what people are saying so that it will be that it's your sin that killed you and job said why do you talk like one of these foolish women he said though he slay me yet will i praise him what did i do wrong oh god that until now i am not married what did i do wrong that in our family there's no marriage what did i do wrong that everybody is poor and broke in our family we get money and nothing happens as far as we are concerned we are christians even if there is a cause or something I've, I've gone for deliverance so what is wrong i bring a word for someone tonight god is about to birth a dimension of glory in your life that you listen when god is done with you you will appreciate it you will begin to thank god and say lord it was good when i passed through this valley of the shadow of death i did not know that it was you making a boast of me in the realm of the spirit and though others have compromised and married he says john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance let me prophesy to you that though weeping endures for a night my bible tells me that joy comes with the morning he says he that weepeth bearing precious seeds shall doubtless return rejoicing there are many people today who are going through certain things because they are christians not because they are unbelievers we have been trained to criticize and persecute people because we have been taught by myopic preachers whose god is their belly and based on the things they see reading just at first sight they just believe When Jesus hung on the cross, the people who had heard his message stood by that cross and they said, what is all this? This man healed the sick. This man did this. I, I mean, we saw him walk away from the crowd. We saw him do a lot of things. Could he be so weak that he's helpless on that cross that men can mock him? Why didn't he demonstrate that he is the king of kings and lord of lords? But for the glory. Jesus was prophetically speaking about himself in that third instance. But I have come under the anointing to announce to somebody. That when the anointing of the spirit shows up. Part of the things that it does to you. Is, it says to appoint unto them in zion you know what that means to set a date for your freedom it says to appoint to appoint isaiah 61 it says the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free it says to appoint unto those who mourn you know what it means to appoint if i appoint you and I say you are a gatekeeper. What happens? You assume duty. So to appoint means prophetically. To look at the people and through the access of the prophetic. To say we call your time of deliverance today. It says to appoint unto them that more. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed. When the spirit takes over your soul that's what will happen to somebody tonight when the spirit takes over your soul when the spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul tonight god will take away that garment of shame he will take it away he will remove it and give you a new garment that when you step out everyone will know that you met the lord i want you to believe i'm not just motivating you his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul
I'm prophesying to you. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. You will be changed. Your glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over and for medical reports that need to be changed tonight it will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over i don't care what the doctors have said i bring you a higher word you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit that garment of reproach over your life it will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit take over your soul and his mother called him jabez she said because i bore him in sorrow jabez did not name himself he was a victim of his mother's prophecy his mother's pain made her to call him Jabez. Jabez, a name that brought sorrow. And Jabez grew up everywhere he went, he saw sorrow. What did this man do? Who sinned? Was it him or his parents? Jabez's mother cursed him. He said, You cost me sorrow. As a result, you will live in sorrow. But a day came, Jabez said, No, come on, God. There must be a way of negotiating this. He said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Remedy this curse over my life. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. I can't live like this. Lord, you are a just God. You must give me an option to demonstrate whether I want to practice witchcraft or not. I cannot be suffering because my father was a king. I can't be suffering because we worship idols. I was not there. Come on now. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of their parents. I was not there when they went to the river to make sure my mother gets a child. Lord, we must negotiate this night. There is a way I'm going to hold on to you. There must be a justice system that will get me out of this mess tonight. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. Listen. Hear me, friends. If you can hold on to the hand of God tonight, you will leave this place with something. But if you come here casually, he will keep clapping for people who came here desperately. There are people who have been fasting for this meeting for days. And they said, Lord, I'm holding on to you. Jabez's mother called him Jabez. And Jabez said, Oh God, thou, would you not bless me? Enlarge my coast. And the Bible said, God answered him. Hallelujah. The thief on the cross after realizing that what was happening to him was a due recompense for his wickedness he said remember me in your kingdom oh lord i do not come trying to justify myself lord i know i slept around that's why i have the terminal disease right now i'm not trying to claim right but i understand that there is a principle in the spirit that grants us access to come before the throne of grace lord i know i used to drink and smoke that's why i have liver condition i know that what is happening to me was not any wickedness of ancestry it's as a result of my carelessness i know i've not been tithing i know i've not been i've not been giving i've been sleeping with other people's husbands or carrying other people's wives and children around and i know that i gave satan legal access but tonight oh god i'm negotiating with you i come what do you think going to the throne of grace is it's not just to go and stand there you go and talk and say lord it is written it is written although it is true that the soul that sins die it is written also that is not your desire that any wicked perish it is written you take the word of god the legal system of heaven 
he said produce your cause bring forth your strong reasons convince me what is the legal basis for your freedom from this witchcraft convince me i saw a pattern that happened from my maternal side in my family it looked like every firstborn male there were certain things that happened to them when i saw it i said no way somebody shout no way this night come on now you need to get angry and say no way i have seen it coming so you will stop it say nobody passes 25 years my own father my blood father his elder brother is late younger brother is late i found out that when they got to a certain age range no matter how high they were they must drop down and die my father has served god all his life but he did not change and then my father was sick almost at the point of death thank god for revelation Hiya. arise shine my light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon me we will arise arise shine our light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon me hallelujah and i got angry i said lord if there is nobody to speak in my family i can't speak what is happening my younger sister collapsed while she was writing examination my elder sister for years would not get admission things were just upside down in my family someone needs to prophesy tonight say order hold on you know how they shout order in court when there's confusion somebody must speak and say order Come on now, I prophesy. Let there be order. Listen, if there is nobody to speak in your family, the altars that speak will keep speaking until somebody comes with an apostolic spirit and says, I provoke another voice. I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. Hallelujah please sit down for a moment we are soon going to stand up I sense the anointing of the spirit strong let me teach you something about priesthood please look up the Bible began to tell us in the book of Hebrews hallelujah when it comes to walking in the justice system of God you don't do it as a king you go back as a priest are you getting the revelation that was why when the Bible was about to explain to us the legal system of the blood and redemption kings were not mentioned again he started mentioning priests you now see why it is the priest in the village not the king that does all the connection with the gods so the bible says that there are different kinds of priesthood and every priest in ancient time had a rod are you getting my point that rod was not a symbol of authority it was a token that connected them with the gods are you getting what i'm saying so there were different kinds of levitical priesthoods and the rest who offered sacrifices and they tried to know the mind of god but the bible tells us that this very priest this high priest they said he came after the order of a strange man called melchizedek you know who melchizedek was melchizedek was a was the king of salem the ancient city jerusalem the bible says having neither father or mother question neither father or mother that means could not be affected by any ancestry are you getting my point melchizedek a man who came that was the similitude of the christ that was why it was melchizedek standing in that priesthood that blessed abraham he said abraham you don't know who is blessing you but you come blessed be abraham possessor of he says son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth what gave how can a man bless a fellow man like that 
the bible says based on the principle of adumbration that means the four acting of something that will actually act melchizedek was a prophetic manifestation of the christ just like elijah are you getting my point now elijah came manifesting as the spirit of the prophetic moses came as the law so melchizedek showed up and he said abraham you come from a land of witchcraft called all of the chaldeans they were wizards in that place are you getting my point abraham was not born a christian abraham was born an idol worshiper and when he met this priest called melchizedek he said let me do something to you abraham come i'm about to change certain things look at me you are not going to get anything from my ancestry without father or mother yet i'm a king and still i am a priest he said melchizedek from today possess the heavens i mean abraham possess the heavens and the earth we talk so much about abraham but the man that spoke and changed his situation melchizedek right now we have come as those sons and daughters of abraham are you getting my point and the bible tells us that the priest that will speak to us that priest comes in the order of melchizedek so when the harbalists lift up their rod like the egyptians suddenly a priest steps in 